reawaken to your immortal identity. And discover life between life's wisdom. Presented by the Michael Newton Institute. Welcome to Discover Life Between Lives Wisdom podcast. Today's guest is not only a past life regression specialist, but she has a strong personal interest in shamanism, and she combines regression and shamanic practices in her regression therapy. Tulan Etimes Schimberg is from Turkey, where she has her own school, the Unicorn Transformation Studies, where she mainly teaches regression therapy, ancestor healing, shamanic practices, and women's studies. Tulin is board certified with IBRT as a level four past life regression specialty. She's one of the founding members of the Earth Association for Regression Therapy, where she has served on the board for seven years. And now she's on the program committee organizing the annual conventions of Earth every year. Her personal interest in shamanism led her to be trained by Leo Ruthford, Juanita Puttyfoot, and Mark Wentworth, and she found herself having a lot of personal experiences from her journeys. Inspired by Sandra Engerman, she started to give lectures on shamanism in India and Turkey. Today, she's the president and a board member of BI Foundation and also of the Metaphysical Investigations and Scientific Research Society in Turkey. Tulin believes that by healing the past, we heal the present moment and the future. And I couldn't agree more. Please enjoy this three parts episode with the incredible Tulin Echimes Schimberg. And uh, I think whenever I've uh, facilitated any group or animal uh, journeying session or spirit guide, meeting your spirit guide session, the group dynamic itself has a very different resonance. Uh, and that also uh, makes the role of us as facilitators, I feel, um, I think we need to honor the fact that the journey is of the individual. The experience is also of that individual. And therefore their metaphorical symbolism, their metaphorical understanding of what is significant to them, that is important, which is why I think uh, in our practice, we always tell them that, okay, so what do you feel? What do you feel? How do, you, how do you understand it? What is it making sense to you? And getting the client to internalize more and more, journey inside more and more to pick up that connection themselves. Because a lot of times when clients reach out, and I've seen it also, uh, you know, people who've had no regression experience at all, and they come for a LBL session. And I, I bring in one point to them that, you know, if you have an unheard, unacknowledged inner child, it might hijack the session. And you may start with Michael's word by word, page by page script in the induction, but the inner child can step in after the staircase and say, listen to me first. I'm not letting you go anywhere. And this is what we always tell clients that if there is something that's to be dealt with here, we need to honor that first and go step by step. So. I showed them the, the train stations, the stop of the train journey, and said that you'll move from inner child to womb, to immediate past life, to past life experiences where lacing comes in of different, uh, maybe you have theme lives, where, uh, as you know, when you were talking about warrior lives or healer lives, where one soul has encountered or experienced incarnations again and again, where a pattern played out across time for them. So as this incarnation, whoever you are and however you come, if you're going into a perspective of lacing, that means there were learnings there sitting quietly for you as a soul to pick up, to acknowledge. And at that time, having the guide around helps a lot because the guide then works a lot like you're, you're brainstorming with your guide, you're, you're, you're bouncing ideas with your guide, but it is you doing it with your own understanding of your present incarnation's mind. So, uh, you know, while you were talking, it came to me that there are so many times we've seen where people have reached out for LBL 
but they've had to go through those stops of inner child healing, past life, maybe a few past life sessions, then going in for LBLB. As you said, that's when the eagle comes and gives you this beautiful overview of all the stops. You'd start joining the dots and you get the full picture. That is, that is so beautiful. Then it's like poetry. It literally opens up in front of you. But you can't get there till I think these factors don't get dealt with. And what I see, like Michael Newton had the map. Yes. To show. And also like shamanic uh, ancient knowledges also had a map. Yes. But I have I remember now a saying of NLP. Mm -hmm. Map is not the uh, it's the representation. Yes. It's not the land itself. Mm. So of course, when you are in the world, there are challenges mm. and we are passing through so many difficulties in life, mm. in the world. Mm. But with those kind of maps, we kind of making our journey more rich. Yes. Because there are already experiences, like there are already uh, so many people maybe pass through so many those pathways. And then, like, imagine that you are lost in the forest and you find a pathway. Then you think that, oh, somebody walked from here. So mm. then I don't need to spend too much time, cut all the woods and yes. get rid of the wild. Or so you see the pathway, then as much as it's bring you to the, it, uh, if it's serving to you, if mm. it's bringing to the right place, then it makes your job much easier mm. and i was kind of since i'm an engineer i was all the time looking all what we are doing how it's serving to our brain because like mm. neurologically to remember a memory a real memory what happened mm. and to imagining uh, like when you make a visualization same part of the brain is working mm. neurologically. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that means for your brain, it doesn't matter so much you, you remember a past life, a, a real experience from this life, or mm. you are kind of doing a kind of visualization. Mm. So the whenever the like the if there is a loop turning uh, if and if the, that loop is open mm. you are kind of making patinage turning and turning in the same point yeah, yeah. but with uh, either shamanic work either imaginary work either uh, so many other techniques regression work and etc we mm. are closing those open loops yeah. then the brain says ah it is closed mm. So that's why I ask, I say to the skeptic people always, you are kind of very clever person. If you could resolve that problem with your mind, you would be not here. Exactly. So if you are here, if you are on my chair, then mm -hmm. you are searching for different reasons from the different places. Mm -hmm. Then I can show you the mm -hmm from the unconsciousness perspective mm. but so then we are, i'm trying to show how the daily consciousness is very limited mm. but we are not limited beings True. we are more than this physical we are more than our thoughts and thinkings we are more than our emotions and feelings yes we are more extended conscious consciousness yes and so with LBR, either with LBR, either with different regression uh, practices, mm -hmm. because I use, for example, some items of each time when I do regression session, mm -hmm. I, I do always uh, a, a part of uh, uh, LBL to look from the place of the yes. planning. Yes. And combining why did you choose that life what mm -hmm. it was serving to your soul mm -hmm. level 
Hmm. And if there, well, there is the answer is not easy to come, then I invite the spiritual guides and yes. uh, guidance uh, to see it above, hmm. to see the purpose of that life and how that life is also hmm. connected with this the current problem and etc. Hmm. So it is always kind of uh, this association from yes. the pro problem itself. And I remember Einstein saying that you can not resolve the problems in the same in the level, yes. in the level of the problem, True. you need to go above it to resolve the yes. problem. Yes. So that's why I think whatever we are doing mm. is reminding or being that this is temporary. Yes. And what we have is divine is in much extended and much more. So each time the journey is passing through the material world and having experiences which are quite not easy every time. But from those difficulties, as Einstein says, there are opportunities. So which opportunity we are gaining mm -hmm. is for the soul level. Difficulty is in the, this physical world. But opportunities goes to the spiritual, spiritual world. world. So <laughs> true, so true. Because <laughs> this association also enables the person to believe they have the choice to change. Because a lot of times when they uh, they're used to living in a victimized space, they start believing and identifying themselves as a victim. What disassociation enables is for them to realize the sheer potential of themselves as a soul to be able to then choose to change because that's a choice whether they want to change or not and i think lbl gives you that because you as you said that because you're using it and we see it so often the moment you're coming here like the eagle and watching it gives you a full picture and it then allows you to believe oh then i can change and for anyone who's a skeptic i've seen when we logically explain this entire thing from the understanding of the soul consciousness, the human mind consciousness, the fact that you have a gut mind, a heart mind, a, a thought mind, uh, explaining how there is a spiritual body, a physical body, an emotional body, or an energy body, even a skeptical person, when you deconstruct it and demystify it for them, that is when they are wanting to experience and being in the body, watching your own body, this whole association, disassociation, association, disassociation, it enables them actually to go much deeper before they realize it. In Turkey, I either receive a lot of religious people, Islamic mm -hmm. people, or mm -hmm. I receive uh, atheists, non-believers. Non-believers. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, spiritual people increasing more and more. Okay. And I can see that the understanding and knowledge uh, per, in perspective, searching for uh, self-knowing and answers mm -hmm. are increasing again and again. So it is not the same as I started 17 years ago. Yes. So I can see huge, huge uh, development. Yes. From the other side, uh, of course, there are, uh, how I may say, uh, believers or all oh, the duality is continuing duality. whatever yeah. so um for it those non-believers when you name it everything in a consciousness mm. so you can you don't need to say god or goddesses or spiritual mm. guides and etc if you say your higher internal consciousness it's how you word it, uh, Tulin. I think for for every, even the region I work with. So you know it, is it is also as therapist. It. it is yeah. our flexibility. Yes. Sometimes yes. we are all so much also stuck. What mm. we learn. So what I try to personally, I try to get as wider as possible, even from a child devil how i can say this to a child how yes. can i say it to the 10 years old uh, child mm. and or to an elderly in a village mm. so then you 
find a common point. It is whole. It's sometimes the wordings are limiting us. Yeah. But of course, it's also bringing us, joining us together. If we were not speaking English, it would be true, difficult. So but, uh, but you know, uh, I had many past lives in India, but I don't remember Indian language. It was when we, when we did see the way you connect to the country, you know, I've, I've experienced uh, my training with you there, and I will always remember that you just kind of just took to it, whether it was uh, seeing that whole uh, experience we had in Rishikesh on the Ganges when we did the whitewater rafting. I wouldn't have done it if you guys hadn't pushed me, very honestly. And I still believe today it was, for me, one of the most spiritual experiences. And it's so mystic because we were all together. We were journeying in class. But then that experience there, that quietness, because I still remember we were the only uh, that raft for the longest in that river. There was no one else there at that time. So that experience I'll always consider very spiritual because it enables us to overcome a lot of human beliefs, human fears. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and you know, when we were talking about the power of no, uh, nature. Yes. Oh, that's the amazing. Thing. What we forgot in this uh, concrete buildings or connection with the nature. Yeah. That's why if you cannot bring the nature nearby, then you the bring internally because yes. your internal conditions belongs to you. Okay. Yes. Sometimes we cannot change the outer conditions, but all the time we can change the inner conditions. True. So, so true. when you close your eyes and when you go to the, your own sacred space and meeting mm -hmm. with your power of animals and journeying into your own nature, mm -hmm. nobody is blocking you. It is only blockage is yourself, only the yeah. sabotator is your mind. <laughs> It's but true. then that's why to learn how to control the mind or mm -hmm. how to go, how to come back. Right. Those basic things are important. Mm -hmm. That's why like um, to have the information is important mm -hmm. uh, not to lose yourself. Mm -hmm. So why we need teachers mm -hmm. to learn in a proper way to do it in a proper uh, otherwise it's also bring the ch like challenges if you don't know that for example you you should avoid the other uh, yeah. energy attachments around yes. you when yes. you open the door mm -hmm. then you will get so much other influences which will irritate you that's why we need to know the right way to be yes. more selective so yes. in internet we have so much information but it doesn't mean that uh, whatever you receive from internet is always true very true so we need to use our brain and our mm. heart. heart we need to think logically but we need to decide with our heart very true. intuitively but yes. co combination of both never yes. only one so, and I think also, uh, you know, when we're talking about all the information available, all the knowledge available, uh, having a guide or a teacher, a facilitator who teaches you a technique, after which you also have to go into that space of beyond consciousness where sometimes you may not resonate with the word, you may not resonate with the term, but go beneath the word and term. And see the element or the essence of what the teacher is trying to give you. Use that for your own benefit. Use that to expand your own consciousness. And that goes beyond race, culture, creed, religion. It goes beyond because then you're purely tapping into your consciousness as a soul. That doesn't have limit. That doesn't have a boundary. That enables you to expand. So when we, when we do LBL, when we practice LBL, I always say that as a person who you are, LBL isn't a session that I feel happens just like that. I always say it's a spiritual experience for the client. It's also a very spiritual experience for us therapists. So it isn't just going to happen. There's a soul consciousness, there's a soul's seeking and the seeking enables that therapist to then manifest. And then such a session happens when the soul is ready, which is why so many times we've heard from people where, the session gets delayed or cancelled or 
or postponed and so on. But it again and again brings us down to how you experience that. And then you apply that understanding and awareness in your present life, in your present incarnation to be able to evolve into a higher uh, uh, frequency. And today, I'm sure you and I will agree that we're seeing a lot of that around us. We are seeing more and more people, very young people for that matter, seeking this. They are not waiting to go into their 40s or 50s, but even in their 20s, even uh, I, I've had teenagers wanting to have experiences which are very spiritual and to see how every time we guide them into the realm of Mother Earth and to see consciousness from there. So it, 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 it is so beautiful to see young souls um, seeking it, asking questions, reading these books that we are talking about. Uh, and, and I feel uh, that's the task or that's the, the responsibility, if I may say, so that we all have today uh, to, be, to be able to enable people to find those right answers, to connect to those answers, to connect to those techniques and tools, and then apply it. As I tell that, you know, it will still be your journey as a, as a soul, whatever journey you've come on. Uh, I might just be the GPS signal, the sat nav for you that takes you from point A to point B. But um, you still have to do that journey because you, you're choosing it. But what you choose and, and how you use what you choose, I think that is what makes this, uh, this work so beautiful, the, the life that we've chosen so beautiful. It just and we are just amazed so with the to see that, that divine order. There yes. is no coincidence, but Absolutely. they have they, there are meaningful synchronities. Yes. So that's why it surprises us every mm -hmm. time, and we we just keep smile and we do keep uh, we have enthusiasm to continue this work. Yes. yes. And uh, every time, uh, different journey and different. Mm -hmm. Uh, experiences and okay this life is kind of we can be also spiritual beings mm -hmm. but anyway we are here yes. so we also need to uh, kind of give the importance and real effort to get more benefit from this life and we are here to learn and change the thoughts and feelings and emotions and instead of the emotions and thoughts and uh, judgments or um, the feelings are uh, kind of ruling us, bringing us and floating us somewhere else, we need to learn kind of uh, harmony. And uh, so it's a beautiful discovery. And uh, so it is nice. The, it's sometimes just walking the paths both in it doing is. the journey but i think uh, to also you you if i if i can just but in you know one of the biggest gift of this work that i that i practice and i think all of us would say this is the ability to be very aware of each moment every moment there's something special sitting there but sometimes we get so caught into our daily life we don't see that special quality of the moment and I think this work that we do, if, if we call it work, if we call it our mission, it is after all our mission in this life. I think that's the biggest gift that we're so conscious of these moments. We're so conscious of what each moment gives us. And not that every time it's a very loving, buoyant, heavy, joy, beautiful thing. Sometimes it could be a heavy moment. Sometimes it could be a very tense one. But even in that, in the moment of awareness and consciousness, we are able to pick up lessons. And I think I'm so grateful, so grateful uh, you know, to you too, uh, that we, we are all aware of this. And I, well, uh, I would like to mention uh, my teacher, Roger Volger was always saying that we are doing all this work to die well in this life. So, so, beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful, so true. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I think it's time to say goodbye for today. Thank it's you. It's such a pleasure to get to know you too, Lynn, and for you sharing your gift with us. It's I'm, I'm feeling really, truly humble and blessed for you being with us today. And you too, Indrani, of course, always Thank enjoy you. spending time Thank with you. you. Thank you. So Thank can you. I have one final thing that I would love for us to do, if you're open to it, to Lynn? 
would you be kind to end this session today with a little drum? drum? Yes, that will be. And then lovely, we'll lovely. That's that. I think going to be the best part of uh, the wrap up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So relax and relax. And you do nothing to relax. Thank you so much, Tulin. That was so beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you uh, for thank you being for with us. Me. It was lovely to share it. And uh, I'm honored. Thank you. Lots of love and wish you loads and loads of joy and a very, very meaningful, beautiful, and may you continue to inspire and share. Thank you.